Here's a nice Valentine's Day story for you, Kurt. I slept with my half-sibling. Woman's horror story reflects loosely regulated nature of U.S. fertility industry. Well, I full slept with... I, I half slept with my full sibling. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria Hill never quite understood how she could be so different from her father. In looks and in temperament. The current Khloe Kardashian. This 39-year-old licensed clinical social worker from suburban Connecticut used to joke that perhaps she was the mailman's child. Oh, God. Hold on to your hat, Kurt. Oh, geez. What should have been a routine quest to learn more about herself turned into a shocking revelation that she had many more siblings than just the brother she grew up with. The count now stands at 22 siblings. Noise. Noise. <laughs> Sorry. Some of them reached out to her and dropped more bombshells. Hill's biological father was not the man she grew up with, but the fertility doctor who had been helping her mother conceive using donated sperm. Well, that's even better than your dad. He's the, a doctor. The doctor, <laughs> Burton Caldwell, a sibling told her, had used his own sperm to inseminate his her mother, allegedly without her consent. So that's this, how Jesus was made. The, the, her doctor, he goes to a fertility clinic. Her doctor uses... His own sperm. It's a story as old yeah. as time. I remember a 90s SNL sketch with John Goodman where he plays the last time. It was a really? big story where a doctor was doing that. Yeah, because keep in mind, like, during the pandemic, I was I was laughing on stage reading these articles about it. So there's all these, like, uh, career gals that froze their eggs, you know, to go find uh, some sperm when they were ready yeah. and this and that. And um, uh, vaccinated sperm is worthless. If you were going to plan to make money off your sperm, you got vaccine. I got bad news. All these vaccinated liberal gals don't want vaccinated sperm. <laughs> and there's a, a shortage of different kinds. We're like, I want the baby to look like me and all that. So there's a shortage. So if you have a sperm clinic and you can't take sperm, well, also you're a pervert. There, there, there's something get, a lot of these guys get off on knowing they put their, like a weird Nazi fixation of like my genes are spreading. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, I'm a, doc, I'm a great smart doctor. You're lucky. There's a whole psychology of it. Um, anyway, so here, let's watch this. The sperm business is dirty business. Put it that way. I mean, and I mean, I'll just put it out there. I mean, I, I was intimate with my half brother. Oh, but you didn't know. We didn't know. So she was dating this guy in high school. Turns out it was her half brother. See, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. They couldn't have known. In the early 2000s, they were two teenagers growing up in Wallingford, Connecticut a suburb like any other, where Victoria Hill met her high school boyfriend. This, I think, was junior year. Obviously, you're dating here. Yeah. What Victoria didn't know then... My husband and I tried for a while, and it wasn't working. What was the infertility world like back then? Back then, everything was, was kept quiet. was kept not really secret secret, but it wasn't advertised. Her mother, Marilee Hill, turned to a New Haven, Connecticut fertility specialist, Dr. Burton Caldwell. Oh, she says Dr. Caldwell told her he would inseminate her using an anonymous medical student's sperm. Uh, Hill got pregnant. There's babe me. I kind of erased it in my mind that they weren't um, my husband's biological children. Until recently, when Victoria took a commercially available DNA test curious about her health history. To her shock, she found half-siblings she never knew existed. One of them reached out, revealing their biological father is Dr. Caldwell. When I opened it up, it basically just kind of put out there, what you're seeing is some half-siblings because we believe that the doctor that did your mother's fertility treatment might be our biological father. And I just, I just remember sitting there just being like... What? What is happening? Victoria's high school boyfriend, who asked his identity be concealed, was also donor conceived. His parents also used Dr. Caldwell. The boyfriend took a DNA test. He texted me and it was a screenshot of the 23andMe connection and it said, you are my sister. What? Whoa. <laughs> We're siblings? So... She continued to find more brothers and sisters, all discovered through DNA. All connected to Dr. Caldwell. Yeah. I've slept with my half-sibling. There were four of us that we know of in the same high school. Another half-sibling, we what? went to the same elementary school. Is there high school and that's in just in the 23 that I know. 
Are you going to go boom? My children have 41 first cousins that we know of, most which are local. So how many could there be? Victoria's story is a worst-case scenario in the fertility field. The FDA regulates sperm and egg donations, but doesn't limit the number of donations nor the amount of offspring, vastly behind some Western countries with tighter controls. And when it comes to doctors using their own sperm without patient consent, there's currently no federal law uh, and only 13 states with existing fertility fraud laws. Wow. I consider you guys sisters, sisters. or I'll say like half sisters. A lot. Right. More people than I think right. we know struggle to conceive. And that's why all of our moms did what they did because yeah. they wanted they wanted babies. They would do anything for my kids' sake. Well, I hope you get the tall gene. Right. Victoria and two of her half sisters say they are Caldwell's biological children, all born within four years in the 1980s. It's only through commercial genetic tests that they can track their growing numbers. None of us knew, and every single time it comes up, we end up having to relive what that experience was like. So, Janine, you went and saw Dr. Caldwell. Yes. You snapped a picture. Mm -hmm. Why did you take a picture? I wanted proof, but I still, when I see that picture, it's this sick feeling. I felt strongly that I had to meet him to make him and the whole situation real and try to make it make sense. Janine Pearson filed a civil lawsuit against Caldwell last year. It's all she can do for some sense of justice. We don't want this to happen to anybody else. Right. Dr. Caldwell stopped practicing sometime in the early 2000s, but he still lives here in Connecticut. So we decided to uh, stop and see if we could chat with him. Okay, so I saw Dr. Caldwell. He appears to be frail, quite elderly. I chatted briefly with his wife, who did not want to talk. The law is, frankly, way behind technology wow. in this area. Attorney Matt Blumenthal represents Victoria Hill, her high school boyfriend, and Hill's mother. There are dozens of reported cases like this of other fertility doctors accused of impregnating their patients. Hundreds of offspring who only recently discovered the truth because of DNA testing. It's been kept from them for so long, they can't do anything about it because the legal system may not provide them a remedy. It's insane to me that there's just no justice. There's no recourse. It's the reason why I'm telling this story. I mean, for me, coping, I need to make meaning of this somehow. I am happy to be alive, but I don't want to be the product of a fraud. Victoria Hill, her mother, and national advocates are right now pushing for federal regulation. Hill is in Washington this week to talk to lawmakers about a proposed federal bill. It has been written. It is currently sitting in the House of Representatives. We will be following them on their journey. Now, Caldwell's attorney had no comment when CNN reached out to him. Kyung Law, CNN, Washington. So happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Trust the science, Jimmy. Trust, you got to trust the science. <laughs> you got to trust the science. I believe in having a substantial percentage of my financial future secured with gold and silver. This is actually real. This is true. I'm putting about uh, 25% of my retirement. I never even thought about this stuff before. Yeah. That's why That's why I decided to partner with our sponsor, Colonial Metals Group. They helped me set up a safe and secure self-directed IRA. You know what that is, Jackie? Self-directed IRA, where I have access to my assets, no matter what the stock market, and for that matter, whatever the government is doing as well. Let the team of experts at Colonial Metals Group help you protect your family's future. We've put together a special offer for our audience. Click on the link in the description below or call our special 800 number and you'll receive a safe and up to 10 grand in free silver. Go to colonialmetalsgroup.com slash Jimmy dash door dash show or call 888-910-1419. Hey, Cub Seals for telling jokes in Philadelphia, Boston, Los Angeles, Palm Springs, Stroudburg, Pennsylvania, Cortland, New York, Oakmont, Pennsylvania, and El Paso and San Antonio, Texas. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm -hmm.